Hey everybody, Abolitionist Jay here with the next edition in my vlog series chronicling my attempted escapes from New Yorkistan. Today is, well, it's after midnight, so now it is May 26th, 2018. It's a Saturday, and that means I am like, what, five days away, I guess, from the closing on my house. Yeah, like I uh, talked about in the last video, uh, the closing date had been set for uh, May 31st, so, or, you know, at the 26th, so we're only like five days away now, five, six, you know, whatever. And, uh, yeah, we're getting close. The storage unit was dropped off yesterday, and I started packing that up today. It's already about a third of the way filled, and I actually only have a couple more big items in the house to uh, get in there in the next day or so. And then, you know, then I fit in, fit in all the other boxes Tetris style and make sure everything is tight as possible. And uh, whatever whatever is not as tight as possible is tied up. So, you know, once they move the storage unit, nothing happens to any of my stuff. But so, yeah, that that uh, that happened. So that was a, that was another step forward. Uh, unfortunately, it wouldn't be me if there wasn't issues uh, along the way. The uh, the storage unit did arrive, but the doors were facing the wrong way when the driver pulled up, and that's only relevant because when I had spoken to the the, the first woman originally that I called when I ordered when I ordered the storage unit uh, at the at, towards the end of our call, she had actually asked me which way I wanted the doors facing, whether I wanted it facing the back of my property or the front of my property. And because of the layout of like, where you know, having it face the back of the property would be great because I could just walk things directly out from the garage into it. Unfortunately, all the big stuff in the house would be a pain in the butt because the back door is smaller than the front door. Um, so it just made more sense to have, you know, fa facing the street so I could walk things out the front of the house and just put it right in. And then just the stuff from the garage, I could just walk around the side of this thing. Um, and I hadn't even thought about this, but the woman asked me and she she said, oh, yeah, we, we have to make sure because you know, obviously once we put it on the trailer, it's going to be facing a certain direction. And when they drop it, they drop it. That's the way it's going to be facing. I'm like, oh, I'm like, yeah, you know, I didn't even think of that. So I'm like, yeah, we decided I decided, OK, yeah, I want it facing this way. And she goes, OK, now I'm confirming this. We're you know, this is on your file now. We're writing this down. I'm like, all right, great. She's like, well, uh, we'll see you in a couple of days. And then the next day, I receive a phone call from the company again, a, di a, di a different a guy this time. And he said, first of all, he's surprised to get me because he told me he was told my phone didn't work, which is was odd because my phone always, well, you know, I don't always get calls because if I'm out of service or whatever, but my phone works. Um, and then towards the, you know, towards the end of that brief phone call, he also confirmed and said, Hey, I just, you know, I want to confirm the address since I have you here. I want to confirm the address and confirm that, you know, the doors are supposed to be facing this way. And I'm like, yep, that's right. Okay, great. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. So the next day comes and when the driver finally calls me and says, Hey, you know, cause he's supposed to call me an hour beforehand. He says, Hey, I'm about, you know, 40, 45 minutes out or so. I'm like, okay, perfect. He shows up to the house. Sure enough, doors facing the wrong way. And the, the driver even showed me the paperwork he had and it had nowhere did it mention whatsoever that the doors were supposed to be facing a specific way, even though I had two people from their company and I didn't even ask, they asked me, two of them confirmed that with me. Um, but whatever, the driver was really cool. And he actually, without me asking, just said, hold on, I'll be right back. And then just drove it out into the street and flipped it around for me, like dropped it in the street and then turned his truck around and picked it up from the other direction. It's like, here you go. And I was like, wow, I was told you can't do that. He's like, yeah, we're not supposed to. But he's like, I, he's like, you, he's like, after I listen to your story, he's like, I, he's like, they screwed up, man. He's like, I don't even worry about it. So I, you know, obviously I'm having money problems. I only have like 10 bucks in my pocket, but I'm like, here, dude, it's all yours. Cause thank you. <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, so the units here. And uh, just because I had some other stuff to do yesterday, mowing the lawn for what hopefully the last guy, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> it's going to be the last time, even though, unfortunately, if it rains twice in a week here, sometimes you need to mow your, you know, you have to mow your lawn like at least once a week. Otherwise, things get insane around here with the, the way the rain pools up in the sandy soil, uh, grass tends to grow really quickly. Um, and I'm just so done with it because I've always, I've never minded mowing the lawn. I mean, I used to mow, like we, we owned an acre in Pennsylvania when I grew up and I used to mow that, you know, starting as a child. I, I mean, my dad gave me some money for it, whatever. Uh, I wasn't like a lot, but I never minded doing it. I kind of just like dug, you know, whatever. I walk back and forth, no big deal. Um, hanging out in the sun, listening to music, you know, as I got older, now I listen to podcasts when I do it. So it's like, whatever, I just hang out, listen to podcasts, mow the lawn. Um, plus it's physical activity. It saves, you know, one of those saves you a trip to the gym type of thing. Uh, but, you know, when I signed the contract to sell my house earlier, uh, way back in March, and I was led to believe by everybody that, oh, yeah, this is all, you know, they're at the, the buyer is super, uh, super interested, super excited to get this done as quickly as possible. You want to get it done? You know, we'll have this done by, you know, mid-April like you want. 
I didn't think I was going to have to mow the lawn at all because sometimes you get lucky and it doesn't start raining until like the middle of April and then it gets crazy after that. But if, you know, you don't even have, you know, you want to mow the lawn once by that point. Uh, Unfortunately, that wasn't the case this year and I've already had to mow the lawn. I think this was like the fourth or fifth time I've had to do it already. But anyway, so like I said, I hope that uh, that's the last time I did that. Uh, But now the unit's here uh, and I started packing it up today. Uh, Got a bulk of the big stuff in there. Uh, I think my mattress, uh, my, 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 my wife and I's mattress is the only thing that still has to go in there. And I'm still waiting for one of those, uh, stupid storage bags, uh, which I thought I had a bunch of them in the house. I did, unfortunately not, they're not big enough. Uh, the ones I have are not big enough for our mattress. Um, but pretty much all the other big stuff is in there. Only a couple more pieces. Um, I think a desk, a couple of dressers and stuff like that. And, you know, I took, I took my bed apart today cause I figured I'd get most of the stuff in there and I don't mind sleeping on the couch and, the couch we're tossing anyway because it's an, it's old it's kind of ripped up and we weren't planning on bringing it with us so that just works out you know one less thing I have to worry about because that actually is going to go out to the curb I think the, the last night I'm here um, they're scheduled to you know the special pickup that comes they have to call and request um, they uh, I think they're scheduled to come that day too to pick up all that stuff um, so yeah so so we're getting there the uh, you know my plan was to get was to get this unit here before the weekend so hopefully as long as it's uh, you know today was a, was a beautiful day it was a little hot uh, which kind of sucked working in the store working inside the storage unit trying to move everything around and fit everything like Tetris pieces so they all fit, uh, fit as securely as possible so they don't move around and in transit and stuff like that um but you know it's still a nice day so i I didn't mind uh you know a little extra sweat sweat never killed anybody and as long as it's relatively nice over the rest of the weekend i'm going to keep doing it because my plan is to hopefully have pretty much everything packed up by monday night uh with the exception of just like a couple of things you know like uh my sleeping bag well no i'll still be sleeping on the couch at that point actually uh the last night i'll be sleeping in a sleeping bag just because the couch has to go out that night so i'll probably end up tossing that you know some sometime uh after dinner i'll just end up putting that out on the curb uh so that last night i plan on sleeping in a sleeping bag uh or maybe actually sleep in the car because that's the other thing i have to do like i said the i'm starting to pack up the house it's getting it's getting pretty done um you know most of the big stuff's out of the way uh probably about two-thirds of the things that need to be packed are packed already and a lot of the stuff that's out is is stuff that's actually coming with me and once we have the unit once we have the house pretty much cleared out and uh, the unit pretty much, you know, packed up the way I want it with leaving extra space in the front for some of the other stuff that I need to put in last minute. Uh, because one of those things is the seats, for, the back seats for my car. At that point, hopefully come Tuesday, my plan is because my, my next court date actually comes up on Tuesday as well. And then hopefully I will know more about my uh, entire situation, like when I can actually finally leave this place. Because, yes, I'm not going to have a house. I'm going to be living out of my car, but still have no idea when I'm allowed to leave New York for the good. Um, so hopefully I'll have more information about that, uh, come Tuesday. But my plan was once I got back from that, uh, to, uh, start setting up the vehicle as well. Cause I have a car carrier that I've, I've had for a few years. Yeah. A, a friend actually, I think she got it, a, a former, a, yeah, former friend at this point. It's been so long. We haven't, we, we lost contact, uh, uh, years ago. Anyway, um, she, uh, she had actually, I think she got it from like a relative, but they, her and her husband at the time lived in an apartment and they couldn't store it anywhere. And they asked if I could store it in my garage. And I said, sure. And then like multiple times in the years after that, I kept saying, Hey, do you want that car carrier? I still have it. Oh yeah. 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 They never came around. I got it. They just, they, they, every time I asked them, they say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just never actually cared about getting it. So I was like, well, I guess it's mine now. I'll, I'll use it. And I have, I used it last year uh, for the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest uh, when I brought my kids. And that was extremely helpful because we needed a heck of a lot more room in the car uh, since I, I had to bring those extra seats and the kids. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, that's my plan was my plan was Tuesday. Uh, like I said, after court, uh, hopefully everything else is pretty much done, and then I'm going to start setting up the uh, setting up the vehicle, and uh, you know get the car carrier up there, uh, where I plan on storing my camping equipment and any of the other stuff that I don't need on a like regular basis, because obviously it's, I'll keep it locked up more often than not, so it just so I don't have to keep going in and out of there, in and out, in and out. Uh, I'll just keep the stuff, uh, like like I said, that type of stuff up there. You know, the camping gear too, because as I've mentioned in the past couple of vlogs, my 
my plan is to do more stealth camping than anything else. The camp, you know, using the camping gear at an actual campsite is kind of a last resort. Uh, we want, uh, I want to try doing the stealth camping for a while and see how that goes. So I don't, pl- I don't anticipate needing anything other than the sleeping bag, which is what I was going to be sleeping on, sleeping in, in the, in the vehicle anyway, um, down on the bottom. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll start setting everything up. The, uh, I, I mentioned last in the last vlog, some of the supplies I had picked up the, you know, the solar charger, the, uh, electric cooler, the, the solar shower and the solar, uh, and the, and the, uh, whatchamacallit, the little stall that goes with that. The, Blackout shades I had mentioned uh, came in. I haven't tested those out yet, but that's part of what I want to start doing on Tuesday. Uh, possibly even staying in the car. You know, like I said, I want to test all that out. Uh, first of all, setting up the shades, and then uh, ho- hopefully it's a, a you know not a hot hot day. But if the sun's out pretty good, I want to let things sit for a while and then go test it out inside the car, see how hot it gets during the day and stuff like that. What we're gonna have to deal with, uh, you know, hopefully get a little better idea about that, and you know, better idea about placement for everything. Because, you know, the, the whole back will be open for the most part during the day, I figure, with Murder Dog back there. and we, we need room to sleep, so I'll be able to store some stuff back there, but I have to figure out where everything else is going to go. And, uh, yeah, we're going to start playing around with that stuff. And maybe even, I don't know, yeah, may, maybe, maybe I'll even spend one of the nights out there since, uh, since the last night I would have to sleep in a sleeping bag anyway. Maybe I'll just sleep in the car that night and uh, do it the first night then and see how it goes. Uh, especially with the blackout shades, we'll see, you know, see how it goes in the morning, see what it looks like in the morning when, when, uh, when we wake up, if we're getting sun blasted in or if they actually work. So yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty exciting. You know, like I mentioned, I've had, I've had some, you know, like the stupidity with the, uh, with the storage unit company, some other crap that came up today that I'm, I don't really want to get into right now. Cause it's just going to make me mad. Um, par- partially my fault a lot of somebody else's fault to another somebody else in this situation who refuses to take responsibility, uh, more money that I'm supposed to be shelling out for things that I wasn't expecting. Um, so it might be a little tighter, but we'll see. Um, I have actually, uh, put my, I decided to put my mining unit up for sale. Uh, I think, I don't know if I mentioned it in this vlog series, but I have mentioned in, uh, in a bunch of my other videos and, podcast that yeah i i've been doing crypto mining for a while uh i built myself a rig last year and as much as i love it and as much as it's still technically um profitable uh ever since uh monero did the uh the upgrade the the did the uh wasn't really i don't know if it was a hard for it, whatever they did um to kick out the asic miners when fluffy pony was just like yeah you get you know we said no asic miners get the hell out of here and they uh they upgraded to uh what is it on v7 now i guess um the crypto note code, uh, when they upgraded, or uh, yeah, when they upgrade, when they upgraded that, they, uh, what should I call it? It be the difficulty dropped back down again to the point where it was profitable to my, my, uh, my Monero again. And it still is, but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to do that. I was actually speaking with, uh, with my buddy Shane Radliff from the Vanu podcast about this the other day. Cause I know he's talked about that possibly trying to do like a small, a very small scale mining thing. once he gets his van nomadism thing, once he gets into that full swing, you know, running off a solar panel, my unit unfortunately is too big, way too big to run off. So I would need some big ass solar panels to run this goddamn thing. So that's just not going to work. And even though there's a you know chance that it still be pretty, still be profitable once I once I finally move, because the difficulty for Monero has luckily stayed down this entire time, thanks to uh, the the work of Fluffy Pony and the guys over there. That, um, but I don't know how long it's going to be. And also because of, you know, the, the money issues I've already had and these new things that keep getting thrown at me. It's like, no, you're going to owe this much more. It's this much more. That, you know, that, that nest egg I was supposed to have for my family is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. Uh, and, of course, there's the other money that I've mentioned before that's going to be held up in escrow uh, until the town of Hempstead finally gets off its ass and, and finishes the permits that I applied for months ago. And they gave, you know, that was part of the whole being lied to over and over and over again. <laughs> where they held it up and now the sale has to go through without the permits being finished, but I'm on the hook for the permits, uh, you know, whenever the town finally gets around to it. So, you know, part of the, you know, the money that's in escrow right now has to stay there until those are complete. So I can't touch that money. I was relying on the rest of the, you know, the, the little bit of the rest of the money that was left over. Now there's going to be even less of that. So I have to start getting creative because 
when I did the uh, when I did the Vanu podcast last week where, with Shane and Jason, you know, they were actually asking me about you know what was what was I going to do to make money out there, and because I wasn't planning on doing this full time like some other people did. I hadn't gotten that far. Like I had a little bit of money uh, set aside from the money I, I was that was supposed to be coming from the sale of my house. You know, I, I I had a little bit of that set aside to live to be able to live off of for a couple of months just for myself. And then obviously the rest of the money was to get us the heck out of here. Also help my kids and uh, my wife survive. Um, you know, she works part time too. Actually, she makes pretty decent money doing that. But um, you know, to help us survive until we get out of here. Um, now there's going to be even less of that. So I figure I may have to get rid of some th- more things. So yeah, the mine, the mine, the miner had to go up for sale, and uh, hopefully, hopefully somebody will take it. And if they do, and I, you know, I get a decent price for it, then I'll actually, I'll be in a little bit better position because then at least I'll have a, you know, a couple extra months worth. I figure because most of the people I've listened to, you know, when I listen to the Vanu podcast and some of the other people I've heard talk to, you know, a lot of people seem to do this on like five hundred bucks a month or less. So. I think that's definitely doable for me. And as long as I can stay under those numbers, we'll, you know, and like I said, if I sell the miner, we'll be, we'll be in decent shape. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Like I said, that's, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, about five days until the uh, actual quasi van nomads, nomadism experiments start and uh, starts rather. And uh, yeah, I'm, uh, like I said, I'm, 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 I'm pissed off about some of the other bullshit that's had to, that's come up, but you know, as I said earlier, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be my situation if these things didn't keep happening because, well, this has just been a theme the entire time. So I'm doing my best to uh, stay positive because, as I said last week, I knew the couple of vlogs before that had been uh, a little less positive. So I'm trying to stay as positive as possible, um, despite the uh, problems that, you know, the potential problems that are that are coming up now. Uh, I'm still looking forward to uh, tr- trying this out, uh, seeing how seeing how far I can go and uh, what I can do and ho- you know what I can learn along the way and hopefully share that information with others cause, because like I said, plan is to uh, do daily vlogs once once I actually get out there. Um, so I think the the next one after this you'll hear from me will be the night of, the night before closing. So Wednesday night I'm probably going to do one more of these kind of like a send off, you know, last night in the house. At that point the house will be almost completely empty with the exception of this recording equipment and if I decide to stay in the in the house that uh, that night the sleeping bag and maybe a little bit of food, um but none of my sound conditioning stuff will be on the wall. So it may be a little echoey, but since the uh since the quality may be changing a little bit once I get into the car anyway, eh, you guys will deal. Um but yeah, so that, that, that'll probably be the next one. And then the, the day after that on the closing, I will probably record a video. I'll probably wait till that night once we, uh, once murder dog and I get set up in our, our place where we plan on staying for the night, give a uh, you know, just give a little report, how things are going so far. And then probably the next morning, uh, I'll do a, I'll do a video pretty much first thing when I get up and then, uh, you know, just as see how the night went if we got if we had to if we had to relocate if we had, you know if we if we were told we had to move you know anything like that um and then uh and then we'll take it from there like i said my plan is to do dailies possibly more depending if if uh, certain things come up and uh and we'll see you know uh i had mentioned that i also um you know wanted to do, possibly do some reviews for uh, the stuff that i'm using i may actually do some video reviews for that i obviously plan on doing amazon reviews too because I, i've talked about this before i'm a big fan of the reputation economy and i love stuff like the amazon reviews and yelp reviews and stuff like that uh, as long as people use them responsibly i know plenty of people who try to destroy like happened to me happened to plenty of friends of mine uh people will try to destroy your business or whatever it is by writing nasty reviews even though they've never been to your place of business or never had contact with you they just don't like what you have to say um but as long as people are being honest with it i think they're great um i'm a you know I, that's how i purchase things a lot of times i go on other people's you know I'll go on the reviews so i, I i'm definitely going to write some for all the uh, uh write write reviews for all the stuff i got but i may actually do some uh video ones too so you know people have actual references seeing this stuff being used hopefully that'll be useful to people um and uh, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, no. One, one last thing before I do go, because uh, I'm starting, uh, as I was talking about the whole uh, video thing, uh, you know, the video reviews, uh, I was reminded that I think I actually started to have that conversation with somebody that I do want to mention. Uh, 
and gosh darn it, now I forget his name, but somebody actually reached out to me on YouTube and I was super stoked about this because it's kind of rare that I get comments on YouTube. We had kind of, you know, uh, between the Seeds of Liberty and all the other projects I do, we had kind of given up on YouTube a while ago because, well, they demonetized us so many times and then they finally demonetized a whole bunch of us uh, for good a while back. Um, but I still put them up there only because I do prefer to use Steam it and DTube. Obviously, this is where, you know, hopefully you guys are listening to this because um, this is that's where it's posted first. Uh, but I have had a couple of people who have had issues watching some of my videos and have requested that I, you know, if, is there any other way they could watch it? So I ended up putting all the vlogs up on YouTube too. But the last one I did, uh, somebody actually wrote to me. And again, I'm, I'm blanking on the username right now, but uh, you can you can go to the last vlog, vlog number six, and uh, check it out. Um, but this, it was super cool because this guy started off by telling me that he has been doing the van van nomadism type thing, but he's basically been living like I plan on living because he was doing it out of a Nissan Xterra and has been doing it for the past four plus years, he said. And uh, traveled back and forth across the country, Mexico to Canada, yada, yada. Uh, and uh, it was awesome because he was like, he said, you know, I don't even know how he, he must have just stumbled across it. I think I think I ended up using the, the hashtag van life, uh, which, uh, J, uh, which we call Chain and Jason had rec- for the Vanu podcast had recommended that I use because they said a lot of people out there who are getting into this stuff now are, that's the hashtag they use. So I threw it on the last one. I, I think that might have been how he actually fa- came across it. But he said he was uh, kind of t- kind of excited to figure out you know to keep following me and uh, seeing seeing what I do uh, he also uh, expressed interest in sharing some of his experiences with me told me that he was actually headed he was headed east currently he was somewhere in the Kentucky region and he was hoping maybe you know at some point maybe we could meet up which would be really freaking cool because I you know talk talk about getting some firsthand information here's somebody who's been doing what I plan on doing just to test out this guy's been doing it hardcore for four years and uh, he's loving it he, uh, you know, he had pretty much nothing but great things to say about his experiences. And uh, so, so again, I'm super, super stoked that he uh, reached out to me. I did share that with uh, the guys at the Vanu podcast. I'm still waiting to hear back from you. So if you watch this one, buddy, again, I'm sorry. I, for, I, forget, you, I've, I forget your username over there right now. But uh, you'll know who I'm talking about if it's you because how many other people have been living out of a Nissan Xterra for the past four years? But anyway, uh, I did mention you to my buddies, Shane and Jason. If you were not aware of the Vanu podcast and for anybody else out there, as well. Uh, I will remember to, I, I forgot last week, but I'll remember to put a link in the show notes. Uh, if you haven't checked those guys out, I highly consider, uh, highly suggest you do so. Uh, great bunch of guys, great information they put out there. And they've been doing interviews uh, recently with uh, some van nomads they've been coming across. And as I mentioned, Shane himself is planning on hopefully within the next year getting himself out there and doing this full time. Um, but my friend from YouTube, they would love to talk to you as well. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm still waiting to hear back from you. I, 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 I was su- super excited to get your message and, uh, I wrote you back. I don't think, I don't think you responded yet, but if you do, um, you had mentioned, you know, want new, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, wanting to share stories. Basically, uh, if you ever want to come on a podcast, if you ever want to sit down and talk to me uh, or the guys at the Vanu podcast, definitely let us know. Uh, we'd be more than happy to do that. Um, and, uh, I, 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 like I said, either way, I'd love to stay, get in contact with you and, or anybody else out there that, uh, that sees this, uh, especially if you're catching this from the va- hashtag van life, um, then yeah, definitely get in contact with me. If, uh, you know, as, as Shane and Jason talk about on their show, uh, obviously if you're, uh, deeply immersed in the security culture and you don't want your face or name out there or whatever, totally understand. But if you're willing to come on, I mean, it doesn't have to be a video like I do here. Uh, it could just be an audio podcast. But uh, if anybody out there wants to come on and talk about this stuff, if you're out there doing the, the doing the van nomadism thing or Vanu or or something like that that you don't know that it's called that, um, then definitely uh, please keep keep uh, sending me sending me you know sending me messages. Uh, let me know what you think, and also you know like I said, if you want to talk, great. Um, even if you just want to talk shop shop off camera, and uh, you know just uh, fill me in with what you're doing, and uh, maybe I could pick up some ideas from you. Uh, that'd be great. Because, uh, like I said, this is going to be a learning experience for me. I'm hoping to be able to share it so others can learn from it too. But I'm definitely, you know, all about uh, picking the brains of other people, especially ones that have been doing this uh, for 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 a couple of years now. Because obviously, uh, you're you're pretty successful if you're still doing it. <laughs> all right. So on that note, I will get closing out. Thank you, everybody, for uh, watching. 
And like I said, I'll be back in a few days. Well, actually, uh, uh, for anybody who just follows me on Steam, it you will hear you'll hear from me again. Uh, probably there, there will be a court update on Tuesday. There's always one of those. Um, so the next video will probably be the next court update. And then after that, uh, Wednesday, the thirtieth. That will be, I guess, vlog number eight in this series, and that'll be the last one from the Rope uh, Lane house in Levittown, and the next time you hear from me after that, I will be living the uh, dream out in the vehicle. All right. I'll catch you next time, y'all. Peace.